is the next Sunday morning. Sister Linda Baltman will be here. She'll be here for Friday night. So you'll be praying and invite folks to come and be in revival with us. Amen. Pray that the Lord would bless and the soul would be saved. People be strengthened and encouraged. The best way for you to get encouraged in the Lord is being church for Amen. Amen. Be in Sunday school. And in this revival, if there's something you need in your life, you'll make an effort come every night. But your mind made up to receive something from God, you can receive. But we've got to have a made up mind. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was studying last night. Seemed like I was having some problems. He kept coming back to me about the prodigal son. I thought, well, you know, that's not much of a problem today, messy. But I kept sitting there and being I went on the bed. I kept sitting there studying on it. Got up this morning and it was still on my mind. And then I got in there and got listening and the black preacher preaching on it. Then I get here and uh, Brother Randy comes to the altar. And I feel like Brother Randy, this message can help you this morning. Amen. We've got to put our trust in God. We've got to completely sell out to God. Make up our mind that we're going to serve God no matter what comes. And if we'll keep His commandments, then we can ask what we will and God will grant it. He may not grant it at our time. He might not, we might want it like microwave, you know. It's not like that, amen. It'll come whenever we prove ourselves to God. We'll prove ourselves to Him. He'll prove Himself to us. Ephesians 6 and 1. If you have your Bibles, you stand with the reading of God's Word. It says this, as children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. Father, we come before you this morning, thank you for the privilege and the opportunity we have to come to worship you this morning. Lord, I thank you for your presence that we've already felt. I ask now, Lord, that you would just anoint and you would have your will in your way, help this message to touch a heart. God, to touch a home and to help folks, Lord, to draw closer to you. Give us a greater love, Lord God, for family and for friends. And Master, we pray that you would just bless and have your way. Touch every home and touch those that have lost their fathers to death, Lord God. Strengthen and encourage and help us, Lord, to be that that you would have us to be this morning. We ask it in Christ's name for his honor and his glory. Amen and amen. I read that scripture because it says to honor, obey your, your parents. It says to honor your Father and your mother, amen. I want you to know. Uh, but then I wanted to talk just a little bit and let us understand what that word honor means. It means to reverence with words and actions. Not just words, but with words and actions. We can speak all we want to about how much we love our parents, but our actions can be contrary. Likewise with God, we can talk about how we love God all we want to. But our actions were so different. Amen. And God's sitting on the throne of glory and He's looking down and He's judging. Amen. I wanted to go for just a minute to Timothy, the second chapter, and verse 22 and start there and read a few verses there, about four or five verses there, before we go over to Luke chapter 15. But over in Timothy, 2 Timothy 2 and 22, it says, Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, Faith, charity, peace with them that call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. I want us to get a thought on that youthful lust. Amen. I'm afraid that every one of us, and maybe you're different if you uh, are, I'm afraid that you know you might be, be a little bit careful, but I believe every one of us in our youthful lust sort of brought some disrespect to our parents. Huh? Now if you say you did, I'm going to have to doubt you just a little bit. But most of us let our parents down because we followed after our youthful lust. So Amen. So it says here, so the flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strives. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach patience. In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Do I? In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that they may recover themselves. You still with me? 
Amen. And praise the Lord. That they may recover themselves out of the snares of the devil. Who are taken captive by him at his will. Praise the Lord forever. It's up to us to recover ourselves. Amen. Now if you will go with us over to Luke 15 and 11. I'm going to start there. So we've established that we should honor our mother and our father. And that means with words and actions. Amen. We've established the fact that it's up to us, amen, to be able to redeem ourselves from what the devil's put on us. How are we going to do that? By turning to the Lord Jesus Christ and fleeing useful lust. Amen. I know that every child, at one time or another, they come to the point to where they let their desires override what the parents have tried to teach them. Amen. We're all guilty. Every one of us are guilty. We also have done the same thing when it comes to serving the Lord. We put our desires and our wants and our wants ahead of serving God. That's right. And it took repentance for us to get to where we're at today to serve the Lord. Yeah. Repentance means turning from that that we were doing, that that was bringing uh, the disrespect or the reproach, amen, upon the family name. We have to turn from it if we're going to overcome that, amen. So useful us will get us in trouble. Over in Luke 15 11, it says, And he said, A certain man had two sons, Jesus speaking. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided them to them his living. Now I want you to notice something here. He said, Give me the portion that falls to me. But it said here that the father divided unto both of them. He had two sons. He gave both of them, amen, their inheritance. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he goes on to say, And not many days after, the younger gathered all together. He didn't jump up and run off right then. But a few days later, he got to have a useful lust. Amen. And praise the Lord. Says all together, And took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Amen. I thought about this young man, and here he is. He, he had the desire the whole while to go out there and live ungodly and live a riotous life, uh, amen, uh, in, in the world. Uh, but he didn't do it because he didn't have the means. There comes a time in our lives, if we're not careful as teenagers, that we'll turn and we're going to follow our lust above what we've been taught, especially when we get to the point to where we can have a little income and think that we're free to stand on our own, amen. But I, I see this young man here as he takes everything. He goes out there and he goes to a far country. He's going to a country that doesn't believe like the country that he's living in. Amen. If we're not careful as teenagers, we'll get tangled up in things that our parents have tried to taught us again, teach us again. And our family doesn't believe in. Amen. And if we're not very careful, we'll begin to squander everything that we got. And it would bring a reproach upon our mother and our father. They're ashamed to say that we're their child. Amen. It's happening. And how many of us have got to the point where we said, I've helped them, I've done all that I can for them, and I just ain't going to do that no more. <laughs> but there's something about it, amen, whenever it comes right down to it, we give in and we do it again. Why do you think we do that? Because there's a love there, amen. There's a bond there, praise the Lord, that we just have to try to do and hope for the best, amen. And God's so gracious to us that He does the same thing with us. He has a love for us and He reaches out to us and He continues to try to encourage us, amen. Although we'll stray, we'll get out there and we'll, we'll lose it, amen. And next thing you know, where we are, we're in trouble and then we want to call on God. Amen. That's the way the world looks at God. God's just something I can call on when I'm in trouble. Amen. I thank God that He's the one that brings me peace daily. He's the one that encourages me daily. He helps me daily. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we've got this young man that's gone out there and he's going contrary to what his father had desired for him. He's out there doing things, amen, that he knows he ought to be doing. Living a lifestyle he knows he ought not to be living. Amen. 
And, and listen to what it says. And, he spent, and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in war. Whenever he got out there, amen, and it seems like, and I can't help but think about the old worldly saying, you know, as long as you got money, you got friends. <laughs> amen. Well, he had money, he was out there, and in this new country that he went to, he had friends. But his money run out and there came a famine in the land. And when that famine came along, amen, there he was in trouble. Praise the Lord forever. So he says, well, I'll just go over here and I'll join up with this group over here. That's the way the devil wants to work. He gets us off out there, amen. And we're ashamed to go back, come on, and uh, admit our faults to our parents, amen. And we want to stand on our own and we want to be independent, praise the Lord. Uh, but so what we do then is we'll join up with those that we know is not living according to what our teachings want. Uh -huh. Come on, amen. amen. Praise the Lord forever. And, and here we are. He's over there and he's joined himself to them. But listen to what they tell him to do. I sent him out to do, amen. Uh, says he, and he went, began to be in war, and he went, joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. Now, listen, this is supposed to be an uh, Israelite, amen. He's not supposed to have anything to do uh, with the swine and the hogs. They're not to eat it, they're not to have anything to do with it. Uh, but he goes over there, he finds himself in need, and he joins up with these people, and they put him to doing exactly what. He's not supposed to do. Come on now. That's the way the enemy works. He'll get you out there. He'll get you in a rebellious state. Rebellion against the church. Rebellion, amen, against mom and dad and the standards and the morals that they try to teach you. And he'll get you to doing the very things that you know you should not be doing. And here's the thing about it. He gets you to the point to where you have to depend on him. And that's where this young man was at. He had no other recourse but to do as they had said for him. Him to do other than one thing there's one thing he can do that he hasn't done aren't you glad that there's somebody that cares about you this morning and somebody that said i'll go with you always even to the end of the world somebody amen that'll take care of you if you'll put your trust in him this young man's out there he's in trouble amen and we never seem to come to reality till we find ourselves in trouble we know there's a god we avoid God, we resist God, we act like He's not there till we get in trouble. When we get in trouble, then we want to call on God. Then we want to get a hold of somebody that can get a hold of God. Amen. Why couldn't we just flee the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, and go ahead and serve God from the very get go? Amen. Listen to what it says here. Praise the Lord. It said, if He would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. I, I wanted to make sure I knew what that word fame meant. You know what it says? It says he would gladly have filled his belly with the husk. He would have eaten them husks if it had been possible. Amen. He was hungry. He would have gladly done it. There's folks out there that's partaking of sin gladly because they rebelled against the teachings of God. Amen. They're, they're rebelling and they're going in their own direction. Amen. And they're trying to fulfill a desire in their life, a hunger in their life that will never be filled until God fills that place. They're seeking after this and they're seeking after that and they're doing drugs. Amen. And, and they're drinking and they're being immoral. I, I praise the Lord trying to fill that hole and there's nothing that will fill that gap but the presence and the power of God. There's a place in every man that God has reserved unto himself and nothing will fill it but the presence and the power of God. There's a peace in serving the Lord. When things get hard and trouble comes, there's a peace in knowing that if I hold on and I'll be faithful, God will come on the scene. He's never failed His people yet, and He's not going to begin to praise the Lord forever. Listen to what it says. He said when He has a of my father's 
I had bread enough to, to, and to spare, and I perished with hunger. Amen. He got to thinking about where he come from. He got to thinking about what he left behind. Amen. He's left his daddy over there. He had plenty. He had a few little chores to do, possibly around there. Uh, but he had everything that he needed. And he's realized now, I'd been better off if I'd have stayed there. How many of us has gotten to that point as a teenager? We've rebelled against God and there's some still in their 40s still rebelling against God. They're still not going to listen to what mom and dad would have to say. Amen. They're going to do it that way. But how many of us, when we really sit down and look, I thought my dad was one of these old fogies. He didn't want me to enjoy life whatsoever. Everything I wanted to do, dad was against it. Amen. But when I look back, sister, I can see that if I'd have listened to what daddy was saying, I'd have saved myself a lot of heartache. I'd have saved myself a lot of trouble if I'd have just listened to what daddy was saying. And what did he didn't want me to enjoy life? He wanted me to have a better life than what he had had as he was coming up. Amen? And that's what God wants. He wants us to have a better life than what we've been having if we'll seek and serve Him. Amen. Oh, that's what I said. He's found out that the people back over there is better off than his, even the servants. Amen. He said they have a, a, a bread enough to, and to spare, and I perish from hunger. Listen to what he says to him. He says, I will arise and go to my Father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more one to be called thy son, make me as one of thy hired servants. Amen. I'm going to stop right there at verse 20 for just a little bit. And I want us to get our mind off of the son. And I want us to get our mind on the father. Amen. I read that thing and read it read. And my daughter came to me here a few months ago and she began to tell me about some problems. And she said, Daddy, what should I do? And I got to thinking about this father. Amen. In this uh, uh, scripture here that Jesus was talking about. You know what this daddy done? He stayed over there at home. He didn't worry about going running after that boy. He didn't chase him down and say, boy, you're going to do this thing like I say, or else he let him go. He just let him go and he stayed there. And the whole time he was there, he was going on keeping his morals. Amen. He was keeping that that he was a subject unto the Lord to do. He was obeying what God had said for him to do. Let that boy go, let him get himself in trouble, but he was still looking down the road. You know what he was saying to himself? He'll get out there after a while. He'll get himself in so much trouble. He'll come walking down that road one of these days. He'll realize where he went from and what he's got that he can come back to. And so he don't run after the boy. He just lets him go. He sits there and he's expecting him to come down that road. It will serve God. Amen. Don't matter what goes say why in our life, we can watch the road. Amen. I think about that song they sing. There's a blessing coming down your dusty road. Amen. It will keep our eyes out there. We don't have to chase after our problems. All we got to do is take them to the master and be sure I'm walking where God wants me to walk, doing what God wants me to do, and he will work out my problems. Amen. In due season. I told my daughter, I said, just do like that father did. Amen. You just keep talking to God about it. You just hold on. Amen. And you give them time. And after a while, God will turn them around and bring them to where they ought to be. We need to get a hold of that this morning. I know it's Father's Day. I know, amen, that some of us has got family. Amen. Uh, that's been separated for different reasons. Uh, amen. And I know that there's some that parents have done gone on. But I'm here to tell you this morning, uh, if we'll hold out faithful to God, there's going to be a reunion after a while. Uh, I may not see some of my loved ones again in this life, uh, but Brother Willie, I got hopes of meeting them over there. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, so what we need to do is quit worrying about that way we're child. <laughs> there's a song we sing, amen. God is good. <laughs> he said, don't worry about that way we're child in that song. <laughs> he says, amen, I hurt you when you call this name. <laughs> All we got to do is stay where we belong with God. Listen to me, Dad. <laughs> you get where God wants you to be. <laughs> you hold on to God. You live what God wants you to be. 
closer to them. Amen. And call that name out before God. And God will open their eyes after a while. They'll see where they're at and they'll turn around. Amen. 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 Listen, the boy said, I know what I ought to do. I ought to just get up going back over to daddy's house. I know I've sinned against God. So it's against heaven and I've sinned against him. In other words, I brought a reproach. Amen. He says, I know what I ought to do. Most of us know what we ought to do. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Those favorite children out there running here and younger, they know what they need to do. Amen. They've been brought up in it. Come on. Amen. So what we got to do, keep calling their name before the Lord. Amen. Keep looking for God to turn them around. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's coming. Hallelujah. Listen, he said, he said, he said, Job his father and said to him, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. He said, I don't want the prestige. I just want to get back to where I can have a peace. Come on. There's no peace when we're out there and we've got problems. Come on now. When the devil's leading us, the devil's taking us deeper and deeper and farther from God. Amen. This dad sitting there and he's awaiting. Amen for that son to come back. Praise the Lord. Believing he's going to come. He must have been believing because he's sitting looking down the road. Huh? Amen. He wasn't expecting the mailman to come back. He's expecting to see God's hand at work. Praise the Lord. Man, listen. He said, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was a great way off, his father saw him. Amen. Did you know something? There's a God in heaven. That sees everything that's going on in our life. He knows every trial I'm going through. Come on. He knows everything that happens. He's, he's prepared for it. Amen. And He will work it out in our favor if we'll serve Him. The whole thing is having faith to believe God and being sure that I'm where God's at He would answer me. Amen. I would not go to somebody that I had a falling out with and try to party or get anything from them. Without I expected to make peace first. Come on. Well, why do we think we can just go on and sin against God and expect God to bless us? It don't work that way. There's too much evidence against it. Amen. And some people, you know, they start out and this little thing and they're ready to throw their hands up. Come on. It's the parents is wrong whenever they go chasing after their children. You know, one of the biggest problems I had in my first marriage was the fact that my mother-in-law thought she could handle me. All men, and she's giving my wife bad advice. <coughs> I made up my mind. I'm not going to get into my children's business. They won't help. They come to me, talk to me, and I'll try to do what I can to help. Whether it be advice, whether it be fine, whatever I can do, I'll try to do it, Brother Willie. But I'm not going to meddle in their lives. Amen. I'm going to keep them before God. I'm going to be expecting God to move. Come on. Amen. And I'm certainly not going to get any ill will or hard feelings with just any of my family. Amen. 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 Come on. Praise the Lord. Listen. Glory to God. He, he, he sees him coming up the road. Way off. Amen. He said, and he had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Amen. You know what best thing to do? And it's work in the church world too. It'll work, folks. I've told some of it before about one time, Dan, I had a lot of confidence in this one woman in the church, older lady. And we went by and picked up one of the kids who came to church, and I'll be honest with you, I was embarrassed the way it was dressed. I felt like saying, I'm not taking you to church like that. But I felt like, too, if she got in church, maybe God would get a hold of her and save her soul. Yeah. Amen. So I took her anyhow. Well, this lady, not thinking, she says to Deanna at church, I want you to look at that ungodly thing in the church. Didn't know it was Deanna's daughter, amen. Come on. Deanna, let that thing start eating on her. This is the way that works. We work that way in families. He'll begin to eat on He'll begin to tell you, well, they've done this. they probably this. And all he's doing is just taking your mind and twisting it up and causing you to doubt God and causing you to get deeper and deeper into that separation and that problem in that family. Amen. Yeah. But I told Deanna, she, she said, I would have never thought she'd have done that. And she's all upset. Amen. And finally, I just told her, I said, I tell you what, Deanna, she made that remark and she has thought no more about it. She's gone on and it's not bothering her one bit. But you let the devil work on you. 
And if you're not very careful, that devil will defeat you and you will lose out on God because of the thoughts that you have about what she said. Best thing for you to do. The best thing for you to do, the next time you see her, you walk up to her, grab her, hug her neck, and act like nothing ever happened. That old woman, when she died, still didn't know that Deanna never had a problem with what she said. But Deanna had a peace in her soul. Amen. Amen. The best thing we can do is to get all the problems that come up, put God first in our life, and continue to serve the Lord. Amen. And treat our loved ones when we see them. If it's two years from now before you see them, grab them and hug their neck and let them know you love them and you care. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Not everything's going to work out peachy for everybody. But we can have peace, amen, by putting God first in our life. Amen. I love my youngins. I love my grand youngins. I don't get to see them like I would like to. But I want to go back and I want to talk just a little bit about what I remember of my life. Amen. My dad was an alcoholic. But I chose to remember the good times. I don't think about the times that he'd come in drinking and he and Mama would have problems 3 o'clock in the morning we're out there hunting somewhere to stay because of the fuss and the fighting going on. That don't bother me too much anymore. You know what I like? Brother Billy, I like the times he and I were fishing together. I remember the times as a little boy, the things that I did with Dad. He'd take me fishing, amen. Now, I got up older, amen. He had a little homemade boat that belonged to my granddaddy. He'd row that boat wherever we went. He'd take the oars and row that boat. His desire was, when he retired, he was going to have him a boat and he was going to do commercial fishing. He had his motor and everything. When he retired, he wasn't able to do anything. He never got to do it. When I got old enough and got a big boat of my own, I thought, boy, if my dad was here. Oh, if I could just share this with my dad. Amen. He never had it. But if I could share it with him, amen. I think about the good times. I remember the times of mission with dad. I remember the, the, the things. We didn't have a lot of money. We didn't go a lot of places. But I remember the time spent with him. Amen. Praise the Lord forever. And Brother Steve, it, it just it does something to you to think about it. And look how God's blessed me. Amen. Then I look on my life and I think how I had it. And my desire has always been for my children to have better than I have. Amen. That's always been my desire. Guess what? My children have better than I have. You think I'm not proud? And the fact that I don't have lazy children that won't work, I'm proud of everything that my kids do. And I'm proud of the ones that sit in church and working for the Lord. Amen. It does my heart good to think, Brother Willie, yeah. that one day, whenever I leave this world, there's going to be a reunion over yonder. Amen. And we're going to shout around the throne of God together, no matter what the devil does in this world. Amen. I'm trying to tell you, brother, I didn't think about you one bit last night. But when Deanna said over there, and he said, no, this way, and he was standing there, I knew what it was. I knew them girls, his father's day, and he was having a problem with them daughters. I'm here to tell you this message is for you this morning. You put God first and yeah. foremost in your life. Yeah. You make up your mind, devil, I don't care what you do. I'm not turning back. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going over to Jesus. And I tell you what, brother, it won't be many days and gals will wake up and realize. And they'll come hunting down here. Listen to me. Amen. We want to try to hold them and choke them down and make them do our way. But it will just turn them loose a little bit. Amen. Amen. And we'll be where we need to be with God. They'll return. God will begin to go to work on this on their heart. This young man, amen. Oh, I thought about asking Deanna this morning. I said, Deanna, how long did you have your daddy? And she said, I don't know. He died in 97. Amen. I said, well, you know, I had my daddy 28 years. She had hers, if I'm not miscalculating, about 48 years. She had her dad about 20 years longer than I had mine. I thought about Brother Allen and how blessed he is. Amen. And hey, what he's in his fifties, amen. And there's Brother Willie still sitting on a pew with him. He's blessed of God, amen, to have his parents there. Now, if we want to do anything to dishonor our parents, amen. I got saved February the first of 1970. I got an opportunity to talk with my dad just about every day. The job I had, I had to go by his house and use his phone. Every day I got a chance to sit there and talk to my dad about the Lord. Amen. August the 12th of 1970, my dad died. Amen. Brother Billy, I was so glad. 
that on February the 1st of that year, I found a Heavenly Father. Amen. I didn't have my dad, but I had a Heavenly Father. I had one to help me through the heartache. I had one to help me through the sorrow. Amen. I had one to help me to forget all the bad times and look back on the good times. And I tell folks now, if you lose a loved one, look at the good times. Stay back on the good times. Amen. It'll make it so much easier for you. Praise the Lord. I'm here to tell you the devil's out there. Parents, what we need to do is we need to hold on and love them kids anyhow. No matter what they do, we need to still love them. And we do. But sometimes we don't show it. And sometimes it's better for us just to be quiet than to say anything. Amen. Sometimes it's best just to be quiet. Don't say nothing. Especially if we're in an upset state when we say it. Amen. I got something I'm looking for to come back, brother. Amen. Oh, praise God. I've got a heavenly father. Hallelujah. And he said he'd never leave me. Nor forsake me. And he's blessed and he's kept. Come on. Amen. We need to take a lesson. We always preach on this son and how the son does. We need to take a lesson of what that father done us parents. We need to realize what he done. He did man. I gave you inheritance. You put it on your own. When he come back, he said he run and met him. Amen. What did it say? Praise the Lord. Got to get the glasses. Can't see. They did operation. It didn't help much on that part. Amen. Listen to what he says. He says, but the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put on him to put on, put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Amen. I, I want you to think just a little bit with me about that ring. That wasn't just an inner, a ring for glittering and being pretty. That ring represented the family seal. Right. Yeah. Amen. It, it's sort of like a notary republic today. You go down there and they stamp something that's legal. He didn't take that son and say, I'm going to make you a servant. I'm going to make you a servant to your older brother. He didn't say you're going to have to pay for what you've done wrong. He put the best robe on him. He, he put the family's signet, if you will, back on his finger. Gave him authority. Made him right back in the position he was in before he left. Right. Amen? Come on. And then he said, kill the fatty calf. Yeah. Amen. We're going to rejoice. My son was dead. And now he's alive. Come on now, church. We need to take a lesson from this, and I believe we'd have less family problems. Amen. Come on. Amen. But every one of us has yielded at one time or another to youthful lust. And I'm going to say this. Might make the rest of the young ones mad if they get this CD. But I'm going to say this, and I have to say it honestly. That boy sitting right there gave me less trouble than any one of my kids. Amen. If I asked that boy to do something, when I come home, he had it finished or he was about to finish it. Amen. If I told him to be home at a certain time, he was there, he was on the phone and wasn't 10 minutes away. Come on. I appreciate you, son. I appreciate the standing that you hold. Amen. I appreciate the way that I can depend on you. Amen. Not all of the kids I can do that way. Amen. But you know what I appreciate most of all out of that boy is the fact that he's in the house of God. Yes. Amen. He's serving the Lord. He's playing the guitar and he ain't out there playing honky tonk. He ain't in the bar room. Amen. He's up there at the church and he's playing gospel music. You think that don't make a daddy proud? That makes me feel so much more better than I would if he was in a bar room playing that good guitar. Amen. That would bring dishonor to me. The whole thing is, we're going to honor our mother and father. We're going to try to live our life in such a way that we don't bring a reproach on the family name. I said this before. I don't have a whole lot to give my children. But I can give them this. And this is what I hope to leave behind, Brother Steve. I can give them the assurance that the way I live my life, that when I die, if they want to see me again, we can meet in heaven. I want to be able to give them that. And the only other thing that I can give them would be a good name that I lived. And my name meant something 
And it wasn't something to talk about. Well, he's a town drunk. Or he's a cheat. He's a liar. He's a thief. Come on. Amen. I want to be able to leave behind a good name and the assurance that there's a place called heaven. And I'm headed that way. That's my desire. Amen. I, I'm not concerned about the riches of this world. What shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? What would you give in exchange for your soul? Amen. Brother Randy, I'm here to tell you, son, if you put God first, put Him first, it might not be tomorrow, it might not be next week, but I believe with all that's within me, if you put God first, I believe next Father's Day you can have the kids inside you. I believe that. But you're going to have to do like this. Sir. You don't want to argue. You get, you get where you need to be with the Lord and expect you to become you. I believe that. Amen. And I started to call Billy and asked Billy to come preach for us this morning. I said, no, he'll want to be with his kids. And I didn't want to, didn't want to pull him away from his family. He's got, he's got children, grandchildren too. Amen. But this morning we need to stop and think about it. I don't want to bring a reproach on my family name, but I certainly don't want to bring a reproach on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the main thing. We need to live our lives and carry on our conversation in such a manner that we don't bring a reproach. I don't want somebody to point a finger and say, if that's a Christian, I don't want to be one. That's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. This morning, you can have victory in your life. And here's the good part about it. We might have went out there, we might have strayed. Praise the Lord, Father. I'm sure I didn't do everything to please my parents. Amen. But when they died, they were, we were back together. Come on. There have been times we had, had difficulties, had problems, but I always had enough respect. Before I would talk back to my parents, I'd turn them off. Amen. Amen. It do some of us Christians good sometimes instead of doing a piece of our mind. Just turn and walk on. Amen. Pray about it. Let God have it. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Randy, get Randy where God wants you to be. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. There's more to go to heaven for than it was yesterday. Yes. Amen. You have got what I'm trying to leave behind has been left to you. Yes. Amen. You got a dad that left a good name for you. You got a dad that lived a life for you. Amen. And I'm sure that he's looking forward to a reunion of that. But you have the control of that. Amen. You might even be the one that has control of whether your family makes it or not. Come on. But we've got to not be conformed to this world. We've got to be transformed. The renewing of our mind. Amen. The renewing of our mind. Where are you at this morning, Dad? Are you setting an example for your children? If your children follow us in your footsteps, are they going to make heaven their home? Amen. Wonder how many tears you brought to your parents' eyes. Wonder how many nights maybe Daddy laid on the bed and worried about you. Amen. Wonder how many times wonder how many times they looked down that road and said, I'd sure like to see that kid come home. Yes. sure like to see that kid come home. Amen. Praise the Lord. This morning, where do we stand? I want to try to be the kind of dad that's going to watch. You men actually made me so mad, I said, I will never help her again. will never help her again. But you know what? Move. She knows it's a lie. <laughs> she knows there's, there's something way down inside of here that when she gets in a bag the old man will be there amen but the one thing that I want to see above all I want to see her serve the Lord amen. I want to see all of my children serve the Lord amen. there's going to be a gathering together after. well where are you going to be where are you going to be the Bible says there will be two in the field one will be taken Want to be left? Where are you going to be? Amen. Wouldn't it be something to be sitting there with your kids? All of a sudden, 
Or to come back and there you sit with no kids, your kids are gone. And if you don't make it, there ain't going to be no peace, no joy here. Without Jesus, when, when, whenever the Lord comes back, it's over, folks. There ain't going to be no joy. There ain't going to be no opportunity then to get things right. We need to have it right now. Yes, we do. Where do we stand? Am I being the example that I ought to be? I live in my father now. If little wheel decides he wants to fall in my footsteps, is he going to be able to go to heaven? If he lives his life, he conducts his life, uses the language that I use, is he going to be able to make heaven his home? And believe me, they're watching you. These little ones have got an eye on you. Mm -hmm. Amen. They're watching. Deanna yeah, and I was talking to someone the other day, and I said something about Will, and when I said, Will, he looked at me. He said, you talking about me? He was listening to the conversation. He wasn't in it, but he was listening. They're watching our every move. And you're somebody's life. Somebody's watching you. Where are they going to be? We've all got children. We've all got grandchildren. Amen. And it says, honor oh, thy father and thy mother. I told Deanna yesterday, the morning we were sitting at the table, and I told her, I said, you know, you get old, something happened, and I forgot something. And I said, well, you know, you get old, you get forgetful, and you get forgotten. <laughs> Amen. Seems like we get old, we get forgetful, man, and then folks forget about the old folks. Amen. Are you ready for heaven this morning? Brother Randy, did you get anything out of this son? Get anything out of it. Let him go. Get ready. For God wants him to be. Amen. Read that. You have to go back and read it over and over. Try to be the dad. Oh, Jesus. That's that one. Amen. Be like our heavenly father. Every one of us stray from him. But he gave us an opportunity to come back. Serve him. Somebody get a song this morning.